Hello friends and welcome to Friday's edition of The Boot Room, the show where we look ahead to the game at the weekend for Ipswich Town. This weekend, it's a big one, aren't they all? They're at Sheffield Wednesday this weekend, another League One big boy. I'm Mark Heath here with Andy Warren to break the game down. And Andy, looking at this, Ipswich Town at Sheffield Wednesday in League One is always going to be a big game. Um, but this is a huge opportunity, isn't it, for Kieran McKenna, who's had a great start to life as manager at Ipswich Town, to really make a statement in this one. Absolutely. I love Hillsborough. Hillsborough is such a good place to go and uh, to go and watch football. And it's a really good place to go and watch football if your team ultimately ends up winning it. So there'll be a big away crowd going up there following Kieran McKenna and his team. Um, big stadium, lots of history, two big, big, big clubs in League One. So like you say, a big chance to... Uh, a big chance to make it a bit of a statement. We've been talking about these statements all all season, haven't we? And they, it mm. turns out they don't actually mean an awful lot. If you make a <laughs> if you make a big statement win at Wickham, you can still uh, you can still end up losing silly games. But in, in terms of this run and momentum that they're on, this is this is a this is a big one. It, they can they can continue that momentum and, and just show a few people that they're a, a real force. Uh, mm. To be reckoned with between now and the end of the League One season, when I'm sure a lot of a lot of those looking on had started to write Ipswich off a little bit, um, despite all the talent we know they've got. So, yeah, really looking forward to this one and looking forward to seeing what they can do. And looking at the stats going into this one, Sheffield Wednesday the, the side immediately beneath Town, so important that Town avoid defeat at least. Uh, and in terms of form, they've been very up and down, haven't they? Wednesday, I think it, they're very very good at home, but um, they've been a bit ropey of recent. Yeah, they have. Um, it's been a while since they've played at home, but they do have an excellent home record at, at mm. Hillsborough. Um, it's a, it's wherever they are in the football pyramid, they will have big support, big crowds at Hillsborough. Hillsborough. They've been they've been down into League One before. Mm. Um, they the crowd there know the deal, um, and and uh, it will be a tough place. It will be a tough place to go. They've got some really good players and a really good manager as well. Uh, Darren Moore, is someone I've always really really enjoyed seeing their teams on the pitch. Even his Doncaster teams of of late have looked um, have, have been good to watch. And um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one. Maybe a bit of a step up from from some of the previous opponents that that McKenna's faced so far. Mm. And from a time perspective, in terms of talking points going into this game, I guess you have to start with the fact they made a signing last night, Dominic Thompson. Uh, we know that Kane Vincent Young's out for this game. Um, Thompson's a, a left-sided player, left back. Um, do you see him coming straight into this side? Yeah, I certainly could. Um, I think that we, we, we were talking yesterday, Thursday, about like late calls being made on who will play on the left right. side. And if you now... The, the, when the words were coming out of Kieran McKenna's mouth at, at the time during that press conference, it, it did sound like he was leaving room for a new player to be be considered in there. He's talking about uh, injuries can change things. Matt Penny and Hayden Coulson training again after injuries, and then there was always little caveats or or other factors. Um, and at the time, it kind of felt like could those other factors be a new player? And ultimately, it has been. Um, whether he was able to train with Ipswich on Thursday, I don't know at this mm. point. Um, I'm sure he will be probably, we're recording this Friday morning, he may well be training with his teammates for the first time as we speak. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if, if uh, given that Vincent Young is suspended, the other two are, are coming back from injury. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he jumps straight into the starting eleven. And in terms of the other kind of team selection issues, there's always the debate around what you do with the front three, which we'll get on to. I guess the main kind of narrative going into this game, of course, is is midfield, because we know that Sam Morsey's banned. He can't play. Um, Lee Evans has been injured. He's, he's missed the last couple of games, which has left them with a the kind of untried and untested duo of, of Backinson and, and Carroll in midfield. Is that something you'd, you'd go with again this game? Is there anything you could do? We talked about El Mazzuni potentially being a, a replacement for Morsey before. Um, how would you approach this one, Hutchie? And they may not have a choice. Um, they're, they're hoping that Lee Evans is is training as we speak this morning uh, with the team. So if that's able to happen, Evans might be an option. And, and if he is, I'd have him straight back in, straight back in the side. Um, Sheffield Wednesday played with three central midfielders. I think it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be important for Ipswich to to have something in there to combat to combat that. Um, El Mazzuni is an interesting one because I, I would have said yes to, to what you've said just there, but he, neither he or Raheem Harper made the bench at Wimbledon. Um, and we know that they're, they're two players, they're lining up for loan moves elsewhere and it, they, they weren't involved at Wimbledon with Morsi Band. And, you know, it's difficult to see that they'll be involved in this one. Um, that mm. might have been that might have been something that was just unavoidable due to how late in the day the Morsi Band came through. I don't know. But... Um, he, he is the one, El Mazzuni, that you think could replace 
could replace uh, Morsi, but I'd be amazed if he jumped into the starting eleven given given he wasn't involved at all at Wimbledon on the other night. So gut feeling is it'll probably be something close to Backinson and Backinson and Carroll again. Mm. Okay. Um, for those eagle-eyed among you, you may have noticed that I quickly dropped the ticker down when I realised I put the formation as three four four. Um, town aren't, aren't allowed to play an extra play, unfortunately, in this game. It's now changed to the, the 3 4 3 we're expecting. And as I say, the, the big question tends to be around town. Um, what, you, what do you do up front with the embarrassment of riches that they've got um, with that front three? We, Bond was rested on Tuesday night. You'd expect him to come back in, wouldn't you, for a game like this? Um, and then who are the two you play with him? 3 4 4 would be great. Yeah. yeah that would that would be absolutely <laughs> ideal for the for the build up of this Ipswich squad. Um yeah, yeah Bon Bon I'd have straight back in as the central the central striker. Sheffield Wednesday tend to play with three three center halves. It's a bit of a 3 5 2 for them. So so I'd be I would be looking at uh, we we've seen Kieran McKenna match up teams that play 3 5 2 before with with three forwards kind of on the mm. three defenders. Um, I wonder if he'll do that again. And then you've got to think, who who could they be? James James Norwood, we've seen him play from the left side. We saw him do that at Bolton and it, it didn't really work. He didn't really get in the game. Um, Connor Chaplin and Bursan Salina would probably be the two I'd maybe look at for this one. It's harsh on Sonny Aluko because I could very easily see Aluko in this as well. But I think Chaplin and Salina, you've got two players there that, Chaplin never stops moving and mm. he can he can play that role well. Selena at the moment looks to me like whenever he's on that pitch, he's so fired up to try and do something and prove, prove a bit of a point. I think he's the kind of player that's always looking to prove a point to somebody. Mm. Um, so I'll match them up with a, a Chaplin, Bond, Selena front three and play Selena and Chaplin nice and tight to Bond and, and maybe try and get on top of get on top of those um, those three Sheffield Wednesday centre backs. OK, prediction time then, Andy. Um, we know it's going to be a tough game, a game which, in which a point would be a good result, a win would be even better. How are you feeling about this one? What are you going to say? Yeah, a draw, a draw would be a good result and that's what I think, that's that's what my prediction is going to be. I'm going to, I'm going to go 1-1 one, one, um, and ultimately that that would be a decent result for Ipswich come come away and, and then go into games with Gillingham and Doncaster, which you'd really be hoping they could win, um, mm. but but come away unscathed from Hillsborough with a point which keeps Wednesday behind them and uh, behind them and um, then hopefully move up that table a bit more with the, the easier games coming up. Yeah, boringly, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say 1-1. One, one. I think as long as they avoid defeat, that'd be a good result. Um, regular listeners, viewers to the, the Kings of Anglia podcast will know that Andy Warren has a say in what happens on the pitch because he's got very lucky trainers that he's fought for games. He's worn them for four game, four of the wins, all four of the wins so far, and he forgot to wear them or didn't wear them for the Bolton defeat. Have you decided what you're doing tomorrow in terms of footwear, Andy? <laughs> oh, this is this is getting silly now. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear the shoes. Yes, so, uh, but I've also predicted they're not gonna win. So. Uh... Yeah, we'll see. We'll I think see it still strong. I think I think it still counts if they if they avoid defeat and you're wearing them. I think that still counts as lucky. Good. I hope so. I'd agree with that. Yeah, I'll, they, wear, I'll, I'll wear the shoes and let's see what happens. There you go. That's all you need to know. You're all caught up with Boot Room. Um, enjoy the game if you're going tomorrow. If not, follow it all with us and we'll speak to you next time.